Did you know Mainstage has a built-in metronome? It's actually really easy to use, but most folks don't know that Mainstage can be your central click source. You can run it out to the rest of your team and it will get all of your ARPs and BPM patches in sync with the master click. So let me show you how to set up the metronome in Mainstage. It only takes a couple of minutes. Let's check it out. All right, folks, so Mainstage's metronome is actually pretty flexible and easy to use. If you're not using tracks, then it can be a great option to send to your entire team to keep everybody locked into a click. You can adjust the tone of the click, and obviously it's gonna lock into the tempo of all of your main stage patches, keep all of your time-synced effects like delays and arpeggiators synced up to the clock. So in main stage, the metronome lives in a channel strip at the concert level. So that's this orange folder at the top of your main stage concert. This is what main stage calls the concert level. And it's where all of your aux bus effects live, where your output channel strips live, and the metronome channel strip. And it's labeled metronome in all of the stock main stage concerts. You're gonna have a channel strip that's named metronome. So you can actually get to this really quickly at the concert level by just clicking on this metronome tab, and then you can view the various settings for the metronome. Now, the metronome is locked to Mainstage's global clock. And that's this little green play button here at the top right corner of the screen. So when Mainstage's clock is running, and then you click this metronome icon, then you'll hear Mainstage's click. Now you cannot run Mainstage's metronome without Mainstage's clock also running. So you'll see when I click the metronome icon, the green play button automatically turns on. That's because the clock is what powers the metronome. So when you turn the metronome on, the clock is going to be running as well. But the tricky thing is that the clock can be running without the metronome actually being heard. So if this green play button is already activated and then you turn the metronome on, you might not be at the downbeat or the one of the click. So you wanna make sure that you turn the metronome on while the clock is off so that it starts with the downbeat. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let me show you how to dial in the click sound that you're looking for. So I'll turn the click on here. And in the metronome tab here at the concert level, you've got some options for the subdivision of the click itself. So you've got an accent bar note here, and that's the one. So I can change the pitch, make it higher, make it lower. And this really just comes down to figuring out what's going to be the best for your band, for the sensitivity of your drummer's ears, the type of in-ear monitors that you're using, whether you're using any tracks or not. You wanna make sure that this click sound cuts through and works well for your band without hurting people's ears or ruining the feel or experience of playing together. And then you've got a beat option, and this is the two, three, four beat. So you can change the pitch of this too. And in main stage three, uh, the group option here is actually redundant in the current version of main stage. It doesn't do anything that the beat uh, option doesn't do for you but you have this division option here that adds a subdivision in between the quarter notes. And if you're a band that struggles to find the pocket and tends to rush in between those beats, then having this division option checked can give you a little bit more context and help everybody stay a little bit more locked in. At faster tempos, it can feel a little bit annoying. So you can turn this on or off depending on the tempo of the song that you're playing. Uh, for me personally, most of the time, I like just the bar and the beat options in, but some folks really do better and stay locked in with that division option on as well. Now I'll start the click again, and I'm gonna open up the Klopgeist plugin. That's a funny name, but that's Mainstage's metronome plugin. It opens up and it looks like this, and these are the default settings that I found that work really well for bands that I played in. It's a little bit more of a higher pitched click sound. But you've got options here that'll let you dial in the click uh, in the way that you want it to. So you can make it more percussive by bringing down the tonality. Or you can make it last a little bit longer by bringing the tonality up. And then you've got a tuning control that brings up or down the pitch of everything. So once you've got your interval dialed in here in the metronome tab, you can pitch it up or down really quickly using this tune option. So those are a few settings 
that you can use to dial in the metronome specifically so that it sits right in the mix for your band. And if you've never used a click before, maybe you wanna try using it in main stage for the first time, just carve out some time in rehearsal to try out some different flavors, some different note subdivisions, and ask the members of your team for feedback on whether or not it's working for them, can they pick it out in their mix, is it hurting their ears, is it too loud, not loud enough, it's a little bit of a learning curve to get used to playing to a click if it's your first time doing so. So just plan on taking some extra time, talking with your team, having some conversation so that you can settle on what's gonna work the most universally for everyone. So once you've settled on the metronome sound that you wanna use, you have to send it to the soundboard separate from your keys or guitar output in main stage because you don't want that click sound going through the speakers. So to do that, you're just gonna need a way to separate out your live audio signal and your metronome signal. Now the simplest way to do this, if you only have two outputs, is just to pan the metronome to one side using this pan control on the channel strip. So I'll pan it hard right, and then you would pan all of your other sounds hard left. And then line one would be your keys or guitar sound, and line two out would be your metronome sound. Um, now, if you're running in stereo for your keys or guitar, then you really don't want to lose your stereo signal just for the sake of running a click. Um, so then you want to either have an interface with more than two outputs, or you can use an aggregate audio device to send the keys or guitar signal out of your interface and then actually use the headphone jack to send the click signal to the soundboard. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to learn how to set up an aggregate audio device. It takes a couple seconds and you don't have to buy any new gear to do that. But if you have those outputs available already or if you've watched that video and created an aggregate device, then you just click on the output here for the metronome and just change that to your alternate output. So then your key sounds will come out of output one and two. And your metronome, when it's turned on, will come out output three and four, which right now is the built-in speakers on my Mac. And that's all there is to it. So that's how you can dial in the metronome sound and then send it to your soundboard separately from your main audio feed in main stage. All right, folks, that's all you need to know to get started using main stage's metronome. If you're new to using a metronome and you have more questions, leave a comment and we'd be happy to help. Otherwise, be sure to click the link in the description to check out all the other main stage tutorials that we have for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.